Utility apps and shortcuts are an overlooked hack to increasing your developer efficiency. So if you're not using one of these five utility apps, you're probably not moving as fast as you could be. Let's check them out. So these are my five absolute favorite use every single day utility apps, specifically on a Mac. Now, if you're not on a Mac, you can go and research and find an equivalent application or functionality on Windows, but this is what I specifically use every day on the Mac. Now, the first thing I have set up is Keyboard Maestro, and this is an extremely powerful macros application where you can set up triggers and actions to do almost anything that you can think of. And if you kind of scroll the list of different tasks or actions that you can do, change your music, send an email, manipulate files, append to a file, click on a specific location on the screen, like all sorts of ridiculous stuff. It's super, super cool. Now, one of the things I use it for is little text shortcuts. So I have one for email, for example. So if I wanna type my email, I can type the short code ZEM and it will replace that with my email or any of my social media links or the link to my website or anything like that. You can think about as a developer, you could add any sort of code snippets that you wanted to as little short codes that you could use. So inside of VS Code, let me scroll down to the end of one of these files. And I can just show you ZEM is my email, Z TikTok is my TikTok account, Twitter, uh, Z website, Z J Q Q R S S. Notice I'm prefixing all of these with Z because that's a character that I don't type very often. So that's one of my biggest use cases. I'll show you an alternative to this that you may be interested in as well in a second. But another one of the things is I use this to manipulate windows for different setups on my computer. So I have on here a shortcut ZTR, which is uh, Z and then TikTok recording, where I want to record both VS Code and then my browser. So let me get these out of full screen mode. So we have these both here. And if I type ZTR, it's moving both of these windows into a specifically predefined position and dimensions that I've already set up my editing inside of ScreenFlow to be able to crop. So it records this entire screen and then I can do a command to grab this window or that one, which is pretty neat. And it's specifically designed for TikTok. So it grabs both of these windows, it puts them on this monitor, and then it puts them in the specific place. So inside of here, if you end up looking at all the different actions, you can get an idea of all the different things that you can do. There's a ton. So be really creative with this and learn how to use this and hack your Mac to be able to do all the little things that you've never thought about before. And if you have any cool ones that you're using that you wanna share with me, let me know in the comments below. Now, I mentioned that I have an alternative to Keyboard Maestro for little text shortcuts and snippets, and that is using Raycast. Now, Raycast on Mac specifically is my replacement to the built-in spotlight for Mac. So I trigger this with Command Space, and mostly what I use it for is to open applications. So I can type in Visual Studio Code, for example, press Enter, there it is. You can also do math in here. So if I do one plus one, it shows me two. You can obviously do more complicated things than that. But another thing that they have is snippets. So if I go and search snippets, I created a couple of tests in here. One is Z James and one is Z test. So if I open up a little uh, note, note window here and do Z test, uh, that thing is gonna replace. So text snippets inside of Raycast work as well, uh, but they're slightly slower than Keyboard Maestro. That's my only gripe is that it's a little bit slower, but the plus is that Raycast is completely free and you can use that. Now, Raycast has a plugin ecosystem or extension ecosystem. Let's search for Raycast plugins. And I think this is where the real power comes from. One of the ones they have that I think is really cool that I haven't used yet that I want to is Vercel. So this lets you monitor your deployments in Vercel. I don't know if there's a Netlify version of this as well. Obviously there is. So being able to tie these plugins into your general development workflow is a huge plus. So check out Raycast as a free alternative to the built-in Mac Spotlight. Now, the next thing I have is an extension called Magnet, and this allows me to get shortcuts to reposition things on my screen. So if we look inside of preferences here, you can see all these different shortcuts. I have shortcuts to move screens to the left half of the monitor, right half of the monitor, top half of the monitor, bottom half. There's even upper left or the four corners, there's thirds. There's the next display. This is super, super helpful. You won't be able to see this, but I have a shortcut to move this to a new monitor. So if I just wanna move from one monitor to another one, I can cycle this from monitor to monitor, and that's really powerful. So again, this is really cool for working in like a development workflow where I can say, hey, browser to the left, uh, code to the right, and now I can see those side by side and be able to get into my development workflow. You could also 
Hack Keyboard Maestro to position those things as well. And the cool thing is you could actually use Keyboard Maestro to trigger one shortcut in key Keyboard Maestro that then triggers other shortcuts, multiple shortcuts for Magnet. So it, actually, it could actually do both of these at one time with one command if you wanted to, like the ZTR one, which moves them into slightly different positions, but you could position them how you want. So Magnet is an absolute necessity. I know on Windows, they have some built-in shortcuts to be able to position things in different places. But if you want even more customization, you may need to go to an outside extension or plugin or whatever you want to call it to get really customizable with your locations of where you put stuff. Now, the next thing, I think this is one of the biggest game changers that I have. Um, I've got to open some markdown files for a demo for my upcoming Astro course. You can find more if you're interested in learning about Astro at astrocourse.dev. But let's say in here that I wanted to copy all the blog titles, all the titles for these blog posts. I could copy this one and then maybe I come back over here and I paste in that title to this little snippet over here or whatever. But what if I want to do multiple of these? Well, I don't want to go back and forth between monitors. So in this case, I could copy this one Using my regular command C, I could go to the next one. So let's copy that one and then come to the next one and copy this and then watch what happens. I'm just going to go to the bottom of this file and close this little small one. But down in here, I can do command shift V and now I get a little pop up window. Unfortunately, it's showing on my other screen that shows me what index snippet I'm looking at. So one of 99. So it stores the last 99 things that I've copied to the clipboard and I can toggle between this. I wish this was doing this on a different window, but I can paste this one. I could paste that one. I could paste this one and I could keep going on. So think about how many times you've copied something to your clipboard, then overridden that by copied something else. Whatever application you find that works for you, find a multiple clipboard history app. The things that I specifically like about Flycut, which is what I use, is I can hold down the shortcut Command Shift V. I can use my left and right arrow to toggle to the one that I want. And then when I get there, I just release and it pastes that snippet, which is the most efficient way that I found to do this. So please find yourself a multiple clipboard history app and take advantage of it. Now, the last one I want to show that I use every single day, and this is partially me being a content creator, but also especially useful as a developer is CleanShot. So if I run Command Shift 5 in here, I have the ability to select a custom window of something I want to take a screenshot of. Let me actually get the browser up here first. Let's get out of clean shot, get the browser to a bigger part of the screen. So Command Shift 5, I can now do a custom screenshot in here. So if I just want these pieces, that's great. I could also choose a window so I could go and click on a specific window. So if I move this over here, move this over here using my shortcuts, I can do command five and choose a window and choose this one or this one or whatever window I want to, which is really cool. I also can do uh, video recordings, which is really cool, including uh, scrolling. So I can do a scrolling on a browser page, which is really neat, a full screen snippet, etc. And one of the cool things is if I do command uh, shift three, this does a full screen screenshot. And then any screenshot that I have can open this little editor where I can go and add in little call outs and then be able to override that thing that I had and then save that to my desktop or just copy the file. So a lot of the time I will uh, take the screenshot, I'll come over and copy and then I'll go and paste that on Twitter or in Slack or in Discord or something like that. Again, great if you're trying to show people this is what's happening when I tried the application, it's failing for X, Y, and Z. Super, super useful and powerful application. I pay, I think this is a one-time fee that I paid for to have this. And I use it every single day as a content creator and as a developer. So definitely get yourself a good clean shot tool or screenshot tool that has some flexibility and features that are nice to be able to share your screenshots, take your screenshots and share them easily. Now, the last thing I want to share, this is developer specific. This is kind of an extra, and this is a specific one that I've talked about on uh, YouTube in the past is fig.io. So notice when I do npm.run and then space, I get IntelliSense for all the different commands that I can run, which is huge. I can also get IntelliSense if I do npm install and I search React, it's going to give me IntelliSense for React packages that I might want. There's also lots of other amazing features in fig, like the ability to create scripts. So inside of scripts, you can generate your own scripts and then run them with a fig run command. So if I started to run that command, I could do fig run and it gives me IntelliSense for that command. It's going to ask me for the port and then it's going to kill that thing. Or in this case, it says there's nothing running. Super sweet. You can add custom scripts to do anything that you want. You can even use AI to generate that. 
Not to mention you can use this to manage your dot files and other configurations and things that you can keep for yourself on multiple computers, synchronize, and then also with a team if you have that. So Fig is another developer centric one that I use every day as well. So those are some of my favorite utility apps on a Mac that I use every single day. Let me know what you think of the list and if you have any other ones that you specifically are passionate about that you wanna share in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about Fig, I've actually done a video on Fig that you can check out as well to show you more of what it can do specifically with creating scripts and using AI to do that. So go and check out the video. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time.